In this video, we're going to be recording a slab on grade foundation, both for a house and a garage. These are the different components we're going to be using, and they're all set up for us. This is going to be the actual slab itself, the four inches thick. This is going to be the footing, both interior and perimeter. We're going to have some sand, and we're going to have a little chamfer around the footing. Let's do the house first. It's a little easier. We're going to pick up the properties for the top slab, and we're going to come over. Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll just make a little L shape here. So there's that foundation. Now move this to the center. Now we're going to pick up the footing, and we're just going to trace the outside of that. And then we're going to do an offset and just this is just to be used as a trace we're going to come in 15 inches select the footing make sure you got the footing not the slab and we're going to take the hole out boom and then we can delete the center so that gives us the perimeter footing with the slab and we can look up there and see we have a hollow section now if we go back into the plan, let's go ahead and extend the footing. I like to use Alt X here to lock in that, bring that up. And we'll go ahead and do something similar in this direction. Alt Y in this case, that locks in the Y coordinate. So that works well. We look at that in 3D. Great. No problems at all. Now we want to improve this just a little bit. First thing we're going to do is take our sand and we'll drop the sand with the magic wand in these holes. Now you can see we have the four inches of sand in there. And another nice little feature is to take this little chamfer, space bar, space bar, space bar. And you can't really see it here, but if we open up this and see we have the chamfer the footing and the sand now these aren't healing here and what I want to do is go through some aspects of the way the fills are rendered because they can be a little tricky to try to diagnose what the problem is so this is on structure foundation this is on house floor if we go to the layers we can see that this has a priority of two and the floor has a priority of one. So for right now, we're just going to make this a one as well. Now, as you may recall, the numbers are not relevant in their order, only if they match or don't match. If, they, if the numbers match between different layers, then the elements on those layers will heal to one another. If the numbers are different, they will not heal. So once I make this foundation a one, you can see that removes that line. We get a really nice clean intersection. These two items are on the same layer. This is on a, a different layer, but it has the same value. This one is not going to heal regardless because it's a totally different material. So it gives us a really nice foundation. And the next step would be to take a mesh. And I've got the elevation a little bit lower than the slab. And we can, it's kind of easy to just group those and then we'll do a solid element operation. Now it's over here. Our, that is our target. The operator is up on the groups were suspended. So now we have 17. We do a subtraction and we execute. Now, when we go into 3D, won't really be able to tell much. But when we look at our section, you can see that we're getting this beautiful uh, slab, the sand, the soil, everything 
is working quite well together here. And this is what our, our goals are. So now we can go back and try to understand a little bit more because I've spent some time to get this set up. And if you're using the template, hopefully it'll just work for you. But there can be some nuances here that make it a little frustrating. So I'm going to suspend these groups for a minute so I can control this. One thing to note is that the footing display order needs to be above the slab so we get this darkened edge so we can perceive where the footing is. Um, the other thing you want to look at is the settings on the section. So this can be a little tricky and a little frustrating because the section settings could override all of the materials and the fills and get a little frustrated trying to understand what's going on. So these fills are coming from cut fills as in the settings. The settings in this case are coming from the building materials. Now if I take this and go to own surface colors non-shaded and look at it, we get a we get a different look here. So these are the surfaces that are coming through, and you'll notice our layers number reverted. So you got to take a caution to set up a layer combination that makes those work together. So let's diagnose this a little bit. So this is earth building material earth, and let's think about where we're getting these the surface so building material earth is here the outer surface is going to be this surface o2 earth and this is going to show up when we have the outer surface of the material when we're using our cut material it's going to default to this material here earth but this only happens if we use that setting cut fills as in settings because we're overriding with the fill properties we're actually catching the surface material and the surface material for this slab for instance so the concrete if we go to six uh, which is our shortcut to our concrete, structural concrete, we're getting this gray color. And that's why the we're seeing the gray here. And we're not seeing the hatches. If we go to the sand, go to s the sand building material is pulling from O2 sand. This, but since we're pulling from earth, which we probably don't want to, we want to change that to sand. Now let's see what happens. Now that's going to lighten up. So that's the sand was being pulled from the building material. So this is one area of Archicad that can be a little bit frustrating because you there's multiple places where your your surfaces your fills, your vectors, all of these can come from different locations and you've got to backtrack from where they're coming. So the first place to look is always to see if there's an override um, on a surface. Now these are cut surfaces, so these cut surfaces could be coming from the building material or they could be coming from a section override. So if they're coming from the building material, it's going to be, you're going to look here at this. This is going to be a vector fill with the background color and the foreground pen. And this is going to be the surface of the material. If we override the material to be the surface of the material in our section properties, then it's going to use the surface information, so we're going to go to O2 sand, so we'll go to 6, O2 sand, and we see there's a color associated with that sand, 
and there's a vector. And I think it might be a good idea to do a stipple here. Actually, here's a sand. And because we told it not to do the vectors, so we can we can control the settings. So on the cut surfaces, we have 3D hatching on the surface. I don't know if we can get the hatch to show up or not. I don't think we can. You can do either shade or unshaded. This is pulling the surface. So, anyways, this is something you're going to have to experiment with. Uh, make sure you understand it and kind of diagnose how you want it to look. Then let's go ahead and take um, something similar here. Let's make a garage. And the first thing with the garage, we're going to draw the footing, actually. And let's do a 24 by 24 footing. And this footing is taller because it also includes the curb. So what we want to do is then take the slab surface. And this is a roof because we want it to have a slope. We're going to draw our slope first. This is our upward direction. Hit O uh, for offset. We're going to trace this. And let's say we want a six inch curb. So in 3D, we have a slab inside this footing. And what we want to do is we'll break this through. So this wants to be negative one and there it is so we just broke that through and you'll see why that makes sense in a second so there's our fill and we're going to do a solid element operation again connect solid element operation so this is our operator the footing is our target. We want to do it subtraction with upward extrusion this time. And now when we look at this in 3D, you'll see we have this beautiful curb. There's our slab. It's four inches thick. And the last thing we want to do is actually cut out. We'll do a Grab the footing, do an offset, 15 inches. And again, we just want to blast a hole through this. And then we delete the inside. There gives us uh, exactly what we're looking for now in 3D. We have a hollow intersection. We have our footing. We have our curb. We can control everything independently it renders very well so I, I really like the way this works a couple of other things we can do here we can take our sand which is also a roof in this case and we're going to put our sand right in here now you're going to need to Get your section to come and look at that. There's our sand. And now, 
this is a little different technique. Um, so I got the sand. I have a an angle on this at 135. So zero is backwards, 90 is straight down, 135 is beyond. And so what we want to do here is actually take the sand. There's the sand. We want to pull it in four inches. Now, if we look at this section again, you can see that we have this little triangle here. And if we really care about that, we'll take this and we'll go four more inches. Do a solid element operation. Subtract with downward extrusion. That's our operator. Here's our target. Execute. Now we get this perfect cut underneath. We can expand our slab. Let's look at that in 3D. Now we want to raise this up. It's flushing out. You got to just decide on your grades based on the project, but the idea is there. Here, we're going to group these. Solid element operation. That's our target. Turn off the suspension so we get everything. And we want to do just a straight subtraction. And now we've got the grade coming out, garage coming in. We look at our section. It blends perfectly. You can control how you want the section to look, um, as we discussed in the other for the other slab. But all the ideas are there. And the last thing I'm going to show you is just how to do an additional footing um, if you have a pad footing or something you want to put in here. So So this pad footing, you can spend as much time as you want on this. It's um, entirely up to you how, how accurately you want to model this. It's not terribly difficult to do it well. Um, so here's our footing. We're going to do a plus, click here. Grab that corner of the footing. But it just depends on, does that footing come all the way through? Does it stop? If it does come all the way through, we can just put a node here, node here, bring that out. That footing is just a little bit too high so we can bring down the elevation I'm gonna hide this layer so that could be how this ends up getting created here we have the sand still uh, if I take a section through there, quite lovely how it all works. So, something to play with. 
if we wanted to do a cut fill on this, this one is not. This one's not currently cutting, so if we wanted to connect that, that would be an additional operator. This would be our target. Execute, and that cleans that up nicely. And again, our we need to reset our layer combination to keep these priorities the same, but once those are the same, that heals, and we forgot to clean up our sand. And let's Probably because these guys didn't get cut from the from the soil. Let's try that. Those are our operators. Target. Trackage and execute. There you go. Yeah, it's because the, the soil was still cutting through there because when we created those new chamfers, they weren't part of the the Boolean operation. So now they are. We have a deepened footing here. Um, so very flexible system. It looks great. It's fun to do. Have fun with it. See you in the next video.